Welcome to Lab Notes. I'm Joe Fetterman with Collier's Life Sciences Advisors, and today we're here with Lou Casa, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Pennsylvania Biotechnology Center. Lou's a return guest, and Lou has a very exciting announcement today. Well, he's already announced, but he's here to talk to us about the announcement from last week about B Labs. Lou, welcome to Lab Notes. Thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it. Love the show, and it's great to be back again. Good to have you back. So you have been uh, hard at work with Brandywine Realty Trust to bring a new accelerator offering to the market. Let's dive right in and talk about uh, what you're offering, the, the size, the timing, uh, and we're excited to hear about it. Yeah, thanks, Joe. I, I'm, we're very excited about it. It's, uh, I believe it's one of the most significant uh, developments in the life sciences community in our region. Uh, we're taking our highly successful uh, Pennsylvania Biotechnology Center model, uh, which has eight or nine ingredients that are very unique, and we're going to replicate it. And the Sierra Center couldn't be a, a better location. Uh, first off, uh, we had many options on the table for replication, and Brandywine Realty Trust, you know, Jerry Sweeney, Jeff Devano, um, who I, I also would like to thank Tim Kelly for making the introduction, uh, really first class the whole organization from top to bottom. And having them as a partner was a big part. It's a relationship. Uh, we do our uh, things really well with uh, services and helping guide companies to success. And Brandywine is, in my belief, one of the best uh, real estate companies you know, in the city. Uh, and they do much more than that. Uh, so the Sierra Center is right on the doorstep of University City. Uh, you could take a, a 30 Street Station to train, walk right across the bridge into the incubator. It's going to have uh, three floors at this time. Uh, the second floor is going to be event space, uh, just tremendous plug and play, co-working space, uh, great views of the city. Uh, the second floor, and once again, each floor, uh, the total project right now is going to be about 50,000 square feet. I could be off a little bit either way. Uh, but what's great about this is each floor is going to be designated. Uh, floor two, uh, three will be bio, uh, and floor four will be chemistry, which is much needed in the city. Um, and as I said before, uh, nobody has really seen this type of incubator in the city of Philadelphia before. The amount of services we provide, uh, we have more common equipment than any other incubator in the country. And plus with Brandywine developing this, I think it's gonna be just the immaculate facility. So you talked about uh, some of the guiding principles that, that you guys deploy at the PA Biotechnology Center. What, what, are, what are some of the core things that you'll be bringing to play that companies can really benefit our growing drug development companies in University City. Yeah, uh, great question. We're gonna we're gonna really uh, our job here at Pennsylvania Biotech Center and at the uh, B Labs is going to be how can we make the company successful? How can we support them? How can we nurture them? And our model is really based on <clears throat> trying to provide as many services as possible so the scientists and the company can focus on the science. So things from Wi-Fi. Uh, you, you know, lab services, having common equipment available. We want them to do what they do best and we'll provide basically a cocoon so that they can move forward. And what's really exciting about this project is we're gonna be right next to, you know, the birthplace of cell therapy and regenerative medicine. So uh, we're hoping, you know, this will be a thematic incubator. I mean, it'll be open to all, but, you know, having some of this technology so close uh, you know, one of our ingredients is we have a nonprofit anchor in Doylestown, which is the Bloomberg Institute. We plan on having one of our uh, professors on site at the Sierra Center as an anchor to help attract. And having a nonprofit running the incubator is really important because, once again, we're mission based. Uh, this isn't a real estate play um, and this isn't university run and they both have their strengths and their you know and, and issues too. Uh, we have our issues, but having um, us in the middle of it and being in the community we will actually be doing research alongside the companies is is a big factor. Lou, who are the who are the target users for for your incubator? Who who do you have your eye on, and why was this the strategic location? We understand you're right near the research core, but who are the companies that you see that you can serve now that perhaps you weren't serving up in Bucks County? Well, you know, we uh, while we're in Doylestown and we're uh, probably 25 miles away from the heart of the city, um, as I've said before, we could be in upstate New York to some folks in Philadelphia. Um, you know, we have a uh, it's it's different up here in the middle of the Pharma Belt, obviously, than in the middle of University City. So I think what this does, it allows us to really tap into what's going on in the city of Philadelphia and, and start from all stages, from, you know, proof of concept all the way through our model. Uh, we really are open. Our doors open to all. 
And one of the unique factors of our ecosystem is while it focuses on co-collaboration, we don't kick companies out. And with Brandywine as a partner, we really see an opportunity for companies to come in the door at CIRA and start in, at B Labs, and then they could grow within Schuylkill Yards and right around there with Brandywine. So you can have your company be birthed at B Labs and grow all the way to graduate and maybe IPO acquisition, depending on you know the strategy. Are there other lessons learned from from the Pennsylvania Biotechnology Center that that you will be bringing to B Labs that that will uh, actually accelerate what you've what you've already accomplished in Bucks County? Well, what, that's, we've learned a lot. I've, I've been here seven years and I learned stuff every other day and we're building a new $20 million building. And believe me, I learned almost every day was <laughs> something new. Uh, but really, I think the uh, early, early stage companies having that accelerator option where we were originally in Doylestown, just dedicated lab space. Here's your key. Here's your lab. Uh, the new model at B Labs, and we've actually transitioned up here in Doylestown, is having common open areas where people can just get a bench. And believe me, at B Labs, there's going to be multiple benches. Uh, we won't have a shortage. I know right now in the city that is a need. And having the bio and chemistry hood options, I think it's going to be very attractive to a lot of the uh, early stage entrepreneurs. Lou, you talked a little bit earlier about some of the core facilities and equipment that that might be there. Um, can we talk just a little bit about uh, the kind of infrastructure that that you'll be bringing that companies will not have to invest in and, and will actually be an amenity to them to to assist them in their discovery and advancement work? Absolutely. We, um, you know, we're working on the equipment right now, so this isn't a final done deal, but we do have um, up, want to replicate the model we have here in Doylestown where things such as centrifuges, autoclaves, microscopes, all your basic lab services are covered when you're in B Labs. Now, there'd be mul multiple levels of membership. Uh, that's kind of what we're going through right now. Uh, we are focusing, Joe, on a, a Q4 opening. Um, so, you know, a lot of that work with architecture, engineering, and equipment is being discussed, you know, every day. Lou, let's shift the conversation a little bit. Um, you know, it, it's a remarkable accomplishment. And, uh, you know, the the integration of, of two um, very well recognized organizations, Brandywine Realty, Realty Trust, uh, you know, a real estate REIT uh, with a focus on life sciences and, and your organization. What were the challenges in putting this all together? How how, how did this all come to be? And, and uh, a little quick look behind the scenes. <laughs> Well, we um, about two to three years ago um, and really studying the model here that Dr. Block created uh, in the ecosystem, started putting together these ingredients and started thinking, you know, uh, there is a reason why companies here on average have a successful exit in three and a half years and the national average is eight. Uh, and there's something to that. So I kind of was working backwards and, and putting this together. And with Dr. Block's support, we, we felt like we could take this model and start replicating it. Uh, then we had to find a partner because I, I'm a big believer in stick in your lane. Uh, we're a nonprofit research organization. We have the Hepatitis B Foundation, another nonprofit, which is public policy and advocacy. It's very impactful. And then the Pennsylvania Biotech Center. So they're all three related nonprofits. And having the research center manage the biotech center uh, was unique. So we started looking. And uh, Tim Kelly, who's a champion at the center, made some key introductions for us. And long story short, after negotiations with a few, and, and even out of state, we've had other uh, organizations outside of Pennsylvania ask us about replicating the model. Uh, we met Jerry and Jeff, and from the moment we sat down, I was just impressed with the, how they run things first class. Um, and when they come up with a concept, it's going to happen. And that was really that that was uh, very attractive because we wanted to get this model up. Uh, it's been about two to three years, and to say it's going to be open by the end of this year is just tremendous. Yeah, you must be really excited about seeing that vision realized. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, um, part of the goal is, and I don't want to get too far ahead, you know, one step at a time, but if this works, I think the relationship with Brandywine, you, you know, who's to say there could be other opportunities of replication. I mean, this is, this could be a national model because of uh, the way we have that blueprint for success. So, uh, you know, but first things first, we want B-Labs to be a huge hit in Philadelphia. Uh, I'm going to shift gears yet again. I want to talk a little bit, Lou. I know you're doing some work uh, in terms of trying to uh, bring more support at at the county, uh, state, and federal lo level to to the growth and development of of uh, 
drug development companies in the in the Philadelphia region in Bucks County. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you're up to there? And and uh, I, I know it's an initiative that that many people are working on, and we're very excited to hear about your work. Yeah, uh, we have a great opportunity in this region. Uh, we are really on the cusp of just blossoming and really expanding our life sciences industry. And I think, you know, when we look at some of the opportunities other states have had, when you look at the life sciences clusters, you can kind of see models that have been successful, such as the triangle down in North Carolina, what's going on in Boston and, and San Francisco. And I think if we can get together a uh, task force uh, of, of multiple people from across the industry, our state and local government officials, we can come up with maybe some incentives uh, to retain companies in Pennsylvania. And not only that, recruit. I think there's, uh, from my perspective at the Pennsylvania Biotechnology Center, we get calls from across the country. We're bringing a, co a company in from San Francisco in April. Uh, I get calls from Boston. And what a lot of the other clusters are saying when they call about our region is, you guys have the talent. You have the patents. You have the NIH funding. Everything is here and it's fertile ground for us to go uh, we're already in a top 10 life sciences cluster, but we can go to the next level. You know, we can break into the top five, top three. Um, but I think a big part of that is getting our state and local officials on the same page, everybody rowing together and creating these incentives and investment so that we can have thousands of life sciences jobs in this state. Well, Lou, I want to I want to pause for a moment and just personally thank you for the, all that you've been doing. Uh, at Pennsylvania Biotechnology Center. I, I, I am so uh, in anticipation of what's to come uh, as this as as your initiatives move into University City and this partnership, uh, the and as you suggest, the runway for companies that are growing and incubating in B Labs to expand into uh, a, a broader schoolyards neighborhood of science is an incredibly exciting vision for our future. So thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, we will stay close and want to hear more about how things unfold and uh, uh, look forward to uh, whatever form it takes, whether it's a ribbon cutting or, or a celebration uh, at the end of the year uh, as you start to welcome uh, new companies into B-Labs. Congratulations. Yeah, Joe, th thank you so much for the kind words. You guys have been great supporters of ours, and it's exciting times, not just for what's going on uh, in Doylestown and at B Labs, but I think for the whole life sciences community. We're, it's really, as you said, it's a runway and we're ready to take off. So thank you again.